In this video we will talk about the Meckel's diverticulum. Before beginning make sure to hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to have a regular update about the upcoming videos. So let's get started. A Meckel's diverticulum is a true diverticulum as it contains all the three layers of the intestine and it is formed by a persistent proximal part of the vitello-intestinal duct. Suppose this is a fetal foregut. And this is the anterior abdominal wall and this is the yolk sac. During the fourth week of the gestation, there is a connection between the foregut and the yolk sac. And this connection is known as the vitello-intestinal duct or the VI duct. It is also known as omphalomesentric duct. And during the natural course of the gestation, during the ninth week, this duct gets obliterated. And if it doesn't, Two conditions can arise. First of all, the whole of the VI duct can be present and there is a persistent connection between the foregut and the anterior abdominal wall. This condition is known as the vitello-intestinal fistula. And the second condition may be that only the proximal part of the VI duct can be present. There is no connection between the VI duct and the anterior abdominal wall and this condition is known as the Meckel's diverticulum. Now let's talk about the rule of twos for remembering the important stats for the Meckel's diverticulum. Its incidence in the general population is about 2% and most common location of the Meckel's diverticulum is 2 feet proximal to the ileocecal junction. It is mostly 2 inches in length and most common age of presentation is around 2 years. Male to female ratio is around 1 is to 2. And two types of ectopic tissue may be present in the Meckel's diverticulum, the gastric and the pancreatic. Now since the Meckel's diverticulum consists of the pluripotent cells which can give rise to any type of cells, the gastric tissue is the most common which can secrete the acid and can lead to ulceration of the Meckel's diverticulum. Clinical features of the Meckel's diverticulum most patients having Meckel's diverticulum are asymptomatic, but if they present, the most common presenting complaint is painless rectal bleeding, which can be in the form of melina. Other complaints in Meckel's diverticulum can be due to intestinal obstruction. There can also be volvulus or intussusception. Meckel's diverticulum can also be complicated by excess secretion of acid, which leads to acute diverticulitis. How the Meckel's diverticulum is diagnosed? The most important test which we can do to diagnose Meckel's diverticulum is technetium 99 per technate scan. This uh, test is also known as the Meckel scan and it detects ectopic gastric tissue. The other tests we can do to diagnose Meckel's diverticulum are the ultrasonography and CT scan. And talking about the treatment, the Meckel's diverticulum is treated only if it is symptomatic and it is surgically resected. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was pretty much all about the Meckel's diverticulum. If you find this video informative, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel for further upcoming videos.